this video, we talk quite a bit about the origin of tarot cards. So some questions may be raised in your mind as you watch this. So if you'd like to uh, read more, you can go to a website I created. It's at www.tarotexplained.com. There's a lot of disinformation and superstition about the origin and meaning of tarot cards. Do a Google search and you'll find that most of the histories place their origins sometime in the Middle Ages. But actually, the tarot cards were ancient even at the time of the Middle Ages. The Dark Ages had dropped their umbrage over Western Europe, which was now poor and dirt-bound after the collapse of the Roman Empire. Culture fled because there was no money to support it and few people were able to read. The pagan ways of the invading barbarians added to a darkness that lasted hundreds of years. The reason for the assertion that the cards came into being during the Middle Ages is because that's when tarot cards were rediscovered. Basically, everything was rediscovered during the Middle Ages because everything had been lost during the Dark Ages. That's why they're called the Dark Ages. Islamic culture had basically taken over the stewardship of Greek and Roman heritage and culture during the latter Dark Ages because Western Europe had lost it. Uh, Europe had surrendered uh, any hold it might have had on world domination of culture due to its Roman pedigree because it was now the refuge of illiterate serfs, uneducated knights pursuing phantom chivalrous quests, and cash-starved nobles. So the resurrected tarot cards began to be imbued with meanings appropriate to the culture of the High Middle Ages when Europe began to awaken from its dark slumber. But much of the meaning from their more distant past had been forgotten and lost. That's one of the reasons that the ancient sages involved in the genesis of the cards used pictures. Pictures, proverbially worth a thousand words, can keep a meaning that oral legend might twist or lose. If wrong interpretations of the pictures enter in for decades or even centuries, the images still exist to reflect their possible original intentions. That's probably one of the reasons the great Eastern teacher Jesus was always teaching in parables. These parables, like the ancient images of the tarot, keep alive the germ of truth that can resist the misinterpretations of whatever Pharisees are currently in power, controlling the intellectual climate of the times. Uh, Charles Coase points out in his re recent YouTube video uh, about uh, the tarot deck that uh, you know Wikipedia has it arising in the Middle Ages. Well, Wikipedia is the, uh, the modern Pharisees. You know they control knowledge and not always seeking truth. You know seeking the power of I want to control knowledge. So there's a train of evidence and tradition that traces the origin of the tarot cards to the dawn of history and to the earliest civilizations, including ancient Egypt. Many people in our day are awestruck by the amazing ability of the ancient Egyptians to build the pyramids. As incredible knowledge and technology as they have, it seems to have been lost along history's way. Well, what was the source of that advanced knowledge and where did it go? After the tremendously large pyramids of the fourth Egyptian dynasty highlighted by Pharaoh Khufu's Great Pyramid, the only one of the seven wonders of the world still standing, the quality of succeeding pyramids declines as if dropping off a cliff. Some kind of technological dark ages entered Egyptian history, a loss of architectural secrets probably alluded to in the ancient tarot card called the Thunderstruck Tower, which was called the tower because in Middle Ages they had towers where damsels in distress were. But if you look at the Egyptian card, it's the pyramid. It's the Great Pyramid that's pictured with its top being blown off by lightning. Another line of evidence for the antiquity of the tarot cards is the abundant appearance of stars on the cards. The sages of ancient Egypt taught as above, so below. The important pyramids of Egypt are laid out according to the pattern of the stars in the constellation Orion and the Milky Way, as we've talked about in other podcasts. The three main pyramids of the Giza complex are a mirror image of the belt of Orion. Orion is Osiris, the important Egyptian deity. Laying out the pyramids to correspond with the belt of Orion was another way to ensure that the dead king would reach his afterlife home in the heavenly constellation. Oral tradition has come down to our day, which insists that heaven is in the open space in the constellation Orion, where new galaxies seem to be being created. The Egyptians were dualists. Everything had its counterpart as above, so below. Nothing was seen in isolation. The Giza pyramids were a replica of the destination of the king. Far from being a tomb, the pyramid was the starting point of the pharaoh's journey back to the stars where he came from, back to the creation event the first time as ancient Egyptians would say. The very existence of the near unanimous acceptance of the major star groupings worldwide, such as the constellation Orion, from ancient times, 
is an evidence of the existence of a singular source for their naming, with many evidences pointing to ancient Egypt as this source. If there were endless varieties of tarot cards with little similarity, or endless and hopelessly different and contradictory names for stars and constellations at various times in history as common sense and evolutionary logic would seem to dictate, then there'd be no force to the argument I'm making here. But the most fastidious historians of the history of astronomy and mythology from different cultures and different time periods in the past witnessed to the remarkable unity of star names and groupings among widely different cultures and peoples. One attempting to blunt the force of this argument would have to explain how it is that stars in the sky like this, so take a look at this, you know, uh, how they can be defined as a certain definite constellation. Looking at this pattern of stars, different people at different times in history could certainly have named it with a variety of different names and images. Oh, I see a cat chasing a mouse. But then I look again, I see a baseball player running to first base. I could name these three stars Tinker, Evers, and Chance. Call it the Cubs. Or I could name them Mo, Larry, and Curly. Hey, it's the Three Stooges. They could be Proton, Neutron, and Electron. I'd call them the Trinity. But I could say, hey, it's Porthos, Amos, and Aramos, Alexander Dumas, the Three Musketeers. Or how about an hourglass? This is the same set of stars I showed you before. It does seem remarkably like an hourglass, though, doesn't it? Why didn't the agents see that? Why don't we start calling this constellation Hourglass from now on? Will our name catch? Why is it that almost all ancient zodiacs, and ours today, call this set of stars Orion, the mighty hunter? Whatever explanation is given must be a powerful one, because in reasoning from cause to effect, the cause chosen must be sufficient to explain the effect. The effect is large and widespread near-unanimous agreement on what the, constellations, what the constellations are across time and civilizations. Pretty powerful effect. The explanation offered above, that it comes from a single group, that offers simplicity and sufficiency. The idea that a single person or group of people named these constellations explains the effect. So when the sage or group of sages uh, from the ancient Egyptians came to these stars, they called it Orion. Now again, it's, it's doubtful that anyone would come up with that name today. Let's be honest. If we showed these group of stars to a million fifth graders randomly, not one in a million would say, hey, I look up there, I see a guy with a club, you know, with a lion skin. Except that they happen to know Orion ahead of time, they never say that. So the great unanimity of the basic images in the tarot deck and the basic constellation names and patterns is a powerful evidence for a single common origin in the ancient past for these phenomena. There's a story in the stars and there's a story in the tarot cards. That's what this video is about. Since the ancient Egyptian sages had the power to have the whole modern world following the naming of the constellations they created, it is not much of an extension to believe that the tarot pictures which they also created, could keep an amazing unity and similarity throughout so many succeeding centuries. This is especially true with tarot cards. The tarot deck, like the mysterious pyramid shafts and the ancient and yet modern star groupings, are all windows back to the secrets and mysteries of the divinely inspired sages from the distant past. It's likely that the same sage or group of sages was responsible for naming and meaning infusion of the constellations, the building and naming infusion of the pyramids, and the creation and naming meaning infusion of the tarot cards. Oral and written legends say that these can be traced to Hermes, the Egyptian god Thoth. The Christian Kabbalah claims that Hermes was the biblical patriarch Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and was translated to heaven without dying. He was possessed with storehouses of knowledge and used his intellectual gifts as a servant of God. As a matter of fact, I believe that Enoch, that we get uh, the, the word inch from Enoch because there was no vowels in, in ancient times. And so Enoch and inch are the same thing. And Enoch was historically believed to be the one that started the science of mensuration. That's why it's called Enoch's circle up in the king's chamber of the, of the Great Pyramid. Enoch inch, and the English system measures, is the lineal descendant from the cubit that God gave to Noah. So, you know, uh, Hermes... Enoch, uh, there are legends that attribute to him the designing of the Great Pyramid and authoring the tarot pictures as storyboards for future generations and naming the constellations with Adam, the first man. This is as plausible an explanation for the origin and meaning of tarot cards as any of the many esoteric and secret society attributions. So here's the point. I think that there's a meaning in the Great Pyramid. 
there's a meaning in the constellations. There's a meaning in the tarot cards. And this meaning goes back to original Aboriginal source. I've suggested it could be the patriarch Enoch, the Greek Hermes, the Egyptian Thoth. So what we want to find out is what that meaning is. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.